Hey, I'm Esat Torlak, originally Turkish. I was uh, five years old when we first moved to Australia. Um, and then I was 14 years old when we moved to Queensland. Uh, my parents migrated to Queensland and I was 14, so I just moved up with them. Um, that's the reason I moved to Queensland to begin with, because my parents migrated. Um, when we first moved up here, it was 1996, uh, mid-1996. It was very different to living in Victoria, actually, because in 1996, there wasn't too many multiculturalism in Queensland like there is right now. And we moved to a place called Kapalaba. Um, we had, it was very different. Like, even the Eng spoken English was very different to what, what, what we experienced back there, because over there, I was in Coburg, I was in a private school, there was a lot of um, ethnic background people in that school. So when we came up here and moved to Kapalaba, we were the very minority of few who were from different backgrounds and, and we stood out. So um, have we experienced any racism during our time? Initially, we have. I think probably many people have one way or another. Sometimes you realise it, sometimes you don't. But when we came first here, we started school straight away. And um, we were different, like, you know, you have those school uniforms with the really short shorts and everything, and that was like, you know, we have to be below the knees, so we were kind of wearing trousers, and um, we're talking a little bit a little bit different. We're still speaking English, but very Victorian and ethnic English compared to um, very Australian and Queensland English here, yeah? so we stood out. Um, and the teacher actually... When we first came into the school, you know, we pray five times a day, Turkish being mainly Muslim, and our parents sat and spoke to the principal, and the principal said, you guys can pray in my room, or you guys can go out and pray somewhere in the yard. So he was very, very helpful when we first came there. But um, you do have moments where you had some teachers who have some kind of stereotypes, like, and they'll make it really obvious with some of the... Um, the way that they talk to you, um, if there was any conflict or anything, you'd sh see that they're kind of choosing sides. Um, it may be they may have thought, you know, these guys from Muslim background, women aren't treated really good over there, so all of a sudden they think that you're like that, and they'll choose a side, um, that side. But um, we had some friends or people in school who um, had been racist, and we had to kind of kind of earn our way to earn a little bit of respect through, you know, as the barriers close and they find a little bit more about it. I guess they were just scared of what they don't know. Um, but this was pre-2001, September 11, so it was a little bit more laid back back then. My sister was the only one actually in school who was had a headscarf, so, you know, she would probably had it even harder than what we did. But um, as time went on, um, racism over the years, as... Queensland grew, um, you found in the last 20 years a lot of people moved to Queensland from Victoria and Melbourne and overseas, so Queensland is I think a lot more multicultural than it was back then, so um, so racism is a lot less in most of the inner city parts and you know South South Brisbane and other, other places I think, um, you know, along with multiculturalism also Queensland food culture even changed. You know, if you go to Melbourne and Sydney, especially Melbourne, food culture is far advanced, but Queensland slowly started catching up in that. Um, racism in the workplace. I have worked in um, a few workplaces. Um, you know, some of them, they don't realise that they're being racist. You know, post-September 11, things were things were very different. All of a sudden, the, the terrorism joke started and... Um, you know, you'd go somewhere and you're walking in the park with your child and someone would turn around and say, so, you know, why are you guys like that? And you're like, why are we like what? He looks like he's known you forever. And then, you know, you either got to talk to them or you just say, you know, if he's come with that kind of mindset, what's the point of explaining anything? Um, but we have experienced those. Um, didn't really change much for us because generally Queensland is a very, very good place to live. Um, people are very friendly. When we went out a bit to the outer suburbs, like when you go up to the Sunshine Coast and a bit north of that, you find that people look at you a little bit like a little bit more worried when you're in the beach and the in the park and everything. But once they get to talk to you, then they know, okay, 
this is nothing what 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 I thought of. Um, probably mainstream media would have had something to do with that over the last twenty years. Um, but once again, as internet and um, social media and um, information, free information flow kind of started happening. I think that gap has also been uh, thinning out as well. Favorite thing about living in Queensland? The weather. Um, that's probably the best thing about living in Queensland. You can go working all day and on the weekend just grab your kids, family, or friends or whatever and then just drive 20 minutes down or 30 minutes down and you're at a beautiful beach, world-class beaches or you can go inland um, to the mountains and waterfalls and everything. That's probably my favorite thing about living in Queensland.